we continue today with chapter 10, The Decision to Forget. Unless you first know something, you cannot dissociate it. Knowledge must precede dissociation, so that dissociation is nothing more than a decision to forget. What has been forgotten then appears to be fearful, but only because the dissociation is an attack on truth. You are fearful because you have forgotten, and you have replaced your knowledge by an awareness of dreams because you are afraid of your dissociation, not of what you have dissociated. When what you have dissociated is accepted, it ceases to be fearful. Yet to give up the dissociation of reality brings more than merely lack of fear. In this decision lie joy and peace and the glory of creation. Offer the Holy Spirit only your willingness to remember, for he retains the knowledge of God and of yourself for you, waiting for your acceptance. Give up gladly everything that would stand in the way of your remembering, for God is in your memory. His voice will tell you that you are part of Him when you are willing to remember Him and know your own reality again. Let nothing in this world delay your remembering of Him, for in this remembering is the knowledge of yourself. To remember is merely to restore to your mind what is already there. You do not make what you remember. You merely accept again what is already there, but was rejected. The ability to accept truth in this world is the perceptual counterpart of creating in the kingdom. God will do his part if you will do yours, and his return in exchange for yours is the exchange of knowledge for perception. Nothing is beyond his will for you, but signify your will to remember him, and behold, he will give you everything but for the asking. When you attack, you are denying yourself. You are specifically teaching yourself that you are not what you are. Your denial of reality precludes the acceptance of God's gift because you have accepted something else in its place. If you understand that this is always an attack on truth, and truth is God, you will realize why it is always fearful. If you further recognize that you are part of God, you will understand why it is that you always attack yourself first. All attack is self-attack. It cannot be anything else. Arising from your own decision not to be what you are, it is an attack on your identification Attack is thus the way in which your identification is lost, because when you attack, you must have forgotten what you are. And if your reality is God's, when you attack, you are not remembering Him. This is not because He is gone, but because you are actively choosing not to remember Him. If you realize the complete havoc this makes of your peace of mind, you could not make such insane decision. You make it only because you still believe it can get you something you want. It follows then that you want something other than peace of mind, but you have not considered what it must be. Yet the logical outcome of your decision is perfectly clear if you will look at it. By deciding against your reality, you have made yourself vigilant against God and His Kingdom. And it is this vigilance that makes you afraid to remember Him. And from the workbook, Lesson 74 There is no will but God's. The idea for today can be regarded as the central thought toward which all our exercises are directed. God's is the only will. When you have recognized this, you have recognized that your will is His. 
The belief that conflict is possible has gone. Peace has replaced the strange idea that you are torn by conflicting goals. As an expression of the will of God, you have no goal but His. There is great peace in today's idea, and the exercises for today are directed towards finding it. The idea itself is wholly true, therefore it cannot give rise to illusions. Without illusions, conflict is impossible. Let us try to recognize this today and experience the peace this recognition brings. Begin the longer practice periods by repeating these thoughts several times slowly and with firm determination to understand what they mean and to hold them in mind. There is no will but God's. I cannot be in conflict. Then spend several minutes in adding some related thoughts such as, I am at peace. Nothing can disturb me. My will is God's. My will and God's are one. God wills peace for His Son. During this introductory phase, be sure to deal quickly with any conflict thoughts that may cross your mind. Tell yourself immediately, there is no will but God's. These conflict thoughts are meaningless. If there is one conflict area that seems particularly difficult to resolve, single it out for special consideration. Think about it briefly, but very specifically, identify the particular person or persons and the situation or situations involved, and tell yourself, there is no will but God's. I share it with Him. My conflicts about blank cannot be real. After you have cleared your mind in this way, close your eyes and try to experience the peace to which your reality entitles you. Sink into it and feel it closing around you. There may be some temptation to take, mistake these attempts for withdrawal, but the difference is easily detected. If you are succeeding, you will feel a deep sense of joy and an increased alertness, rather than a feeling of drowsiness and enervation. Joy characterizes peace. By this experience you will recognize that you have reached it. If you feel yourself slipping off into withdrawal, quickly repeat the idea for today and try again. Do this as often as necessary. There is definite gain in refusing to allow retreat into withdrawal, even if you do not experience the peace you seek. In the shorter periods, which should be undertaken at regular predetermined intervals today, Say to yourself, there is no will but God's. I seek His peace today. Then try to find what you are seeking. A minute or two every half an hour, with eyes closed if possible, would be well spent on this today. There is no will but God's. So today is a day of sinking deep, deep within. Opening, opening our hearts to the understanding, to the awareness, to the experience that there is no wills but God.
we have seen from the text that it was only the decision to forget that generated a dissociation. To dissociate is to attempt to forget. But the knowledge of God, the knowledge of truth, the knowledge of oneness must precede dissociation. So dissociation is nothing more than a decision to forget. Today we come back to the truth. In the experience that there is no will but God's. That all attack is an attempt to forget God. Any seeming attack is an attempt at an attack on truth. This is because you have replaced your knowledge by an awareness of dreams, because you are afraid of your dissociation, not of what you have dissociated. Afraid of dissociation, but not of what has been dissociated. Jesus reminds us, when what you have dissociated is accepted, it ceases to be fearful. Love ceases to be fearful when it is accepted. Peace ceases to be fearful when it is accepted. Joy, happiness cease to be fearful when they are accepted. Oneness, God, ceases to be fearful when this pure love and oneness, when God ceases to be fearful. In this decision lie joy and peace in the glory of creation. And today we bring our willingness to remember. As Simba hears from the clouds and the sky, the voice of his father in the movie Lion King. Remember, remember. For in this remembering is the knowledge of ourself as the Christ. Remember identity. Remember. To remember is merely to restore to your mind what is already there. You do not make what you remember, you merely accept again what is already there, but was rejected. The ability to accept truth in this world is the perceptual counterpart of creating in the kingdom. Today we open to accept our identity. Today we realize we are the Kingdom of Heaven.
there is great peace in today's idea. There is no will but God's. I am at peace. Nothing can disturb me. My will is God's. My will and God's are one. There is no will but God's. I share it with him. There is no will but God's. Amen.